Hello and welcome to the Noble Network Virtual College Fair. We are very excited to have you participating in this event this evening. My name is Jennifer and I'll be your facilitator today. We have some great schools with us. I'm excited for you to hear from them. But before we get started, I have a few housekeeping announcements. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can, though, use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. You can leave a question um, for each of our schools to weigh in on. Um, a more general question, maybe you want to know about someone having a certain major or a certain out of class activity. If you do have a question for a specific one of our programs, please be sure to include the name of the school with your question so the our presenter will know that you are looking forward to hearing from them. This is just one of many different sessions that have been held for Noble Network students. We hope you've enjoyed the other sessions. Like those other sessions, this presentation is also being recorded. All of these recordings will be posted in the coming days at the same website where you registered, strivescan.com slash noble. All right, well, I'm very excited to turn it over to our first school that we'll be hearing from today, and that is going to be Alabama State University. Hello, hello, thank you. My name is Desiree Dixon Moore. I am a district recruiter for the Alabama State University and I wanna take thank Noble Network for having us this evening. I'm gonna quickly share my screen. Okay. Alabama State University is one of the oldest HBCUs. It was started in 1867 in Marion, Alabama by nine freed slaves. We call them the Marion Nine. Since then, we have become the 172 acre beautiful campus in Montgomery, Alabama, which is uh, the capital hey. of Montgomery. Desiree, can we yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt, but can we try, can we try sharing your screen again? There is some, um, there's like just something on the screen looks a little funny. So could you just try resharing it for me? I want to make sure we get it just perfect. There's oh, like a sure. sort of a black gray bar at the top of the page. So I want okay. I paused your time, so don't worry. Um, but I just wanted to try and catch that. Okay. There we go. If it still shows up, we'll keep going. It's just at the top. Oh, there we go. That's looking much better there. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Take it away. All right. Cool. Well, Alabama State University is a test optional um, campus. That means if you have a 2.0 GPA, you can enter our university under general admission. Now, we also are offering under in our admissions department four academic scholarships. And if you have a 2.75 GPA and ACT score of 18, you can qualify for the black and gold scholarship. Now I say academic scholarships, but we're test optional. That you know means that you can waive your test scores, but for academic scholarships, you must have your ACT or SAT scores. Now we're also doing super scoring on our ACTs. So that means uh, we're taking the best of your categories if you've taken the ACT more than once to give you that cumulative that can meet one of the qualifications for our four academic scholarships. Now we have 62 different degree programs and some of our more popular ones are biology pre-health professional. That's uh, if you're going into nursing school and medical school. And we send out our third year students, they have that option of going to South America where they get that hands-on experience, labor delivery, immunizations, helping with operations and such. We also have forensics, forensic biology, forensic chemistry. We have to say CSI at ASU. We do all of the homicide and murder investigations for the state of Alabama in our forensic degree program. Another popular program is our performing arts. We have one of the best in the Southeast part of the country. Oh, I always want to mention, this is something new, the President's Promise Scholarship, uh, which has been extended, which means that if you're an out-of-state student, you can get the in-state tuition automatically applied. 
And I like to tell our future Hornets, you know, college, your college degree is the most important thing. That's your priority for being in college. But you want to have a balance of fun things, entering, interesting things, things that are engaging and interesting to you. Um, that makes your college experience just a wonderful thing. You're going to make friends for life and have experiences that you, you'll, you'll never forget. And so ASU has... Uh, something for everyone, I say. We we have the Greek life. We have the divine nine, as they say, the historical Black fraternities and sororities. We have all nine of them. Plus, we have 50 plus student organizations, student government, uh, academic and honor societies, um, community outreach, volunteerism, something for everyone. In addition to that, we do have 18 intercollegiate athletic teams, Division One as well. And we would be remiss if we didn't mention our marching band, the Mighty Marching Hornets, our plus size honeybees dance team and the Stingats. They are literally nationally known. But once again, we come back to the, the, to the, to the end of the journey, which is that degree. Uh, and we want to be a partner with you at Alabama State University. We have a 17 to 1 student to faculty ratio, very family oriented. We have the resources that you need from career services, counseling services, tutoring to, to help you accomplish uh, what you're there to accomplish, which is to get a degree and have a, a wonderful experience in that. We do at our campus have campus tours five days a week. Three, three times a day. So we employ you to come and take a tour of our, our campus, our beautiful campus in Montgomery, Alabama. We also um, gonna put in the chat for you, not only my contact information listed here, but links uh, as well. And we also have a virtual tour that I will put in the chat as well. If you have any questions after the virtual is over, feel free to reach out to me. Um, and thank you once again. And as always, it's a great time to be a Hornet. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Desiree, for not only starting us off, but sharing all of that incredible information about Alabama State University. We are on to our next school. We are going to be learning all about Fort Valley State University. Hello, everybody. My name is Lauren Bass, and I am the Assistant Director of Recruitment um, here at Fort Valley State University. Can you guys see my screen? Awesome. Everything looks great, Lauren. Take it away. So Fort Valley State University is located in middle Georgia. Uh, we are in the central area. So we're about two hours south of the Atlanta area. And for those who may be familiar with North Florida, we're two hours above Valdosta, Georgia. It's a very easy transition to come from high school to college here because our student to faculty ratio is 20 to one. We are the only 1890 land grant HBCU here in Georgia. And our resources, it feels like a small private school, but we have the resources of a large public university. So we have a little bit less than 3000 students, but school size, we have 1300 acres, which leads to a lot of space to grow as we continue to build programs and increase our enrollment. Some of our most popular majors include biology, psychology, business management, criminal justice, veterinary technology, and agriculture engineering technology. And we also have a partnership with uh, Suffolk Law School up in Boston for students who are interested in pre-law. Um, they have a full scholarship for HBCU graduates, and a lot of our students are uh, participating and interested in that opportunity. In total, we have 30 programs and they are within three different colleges. So we have our College of Arts and Sciences, which is our largest college. Then we have Agriculture, Family Sciences and Technology. And we also have Education and Professional Studies. Uh, one of our amazing programs that we like to brag about is our CDEP program. 
CDEV is a 3-2 program. So because we don't have engineering, we've partnered with a few other institutions that do offer engineering. So students are able to do three years here at Fort Valley State University and then two years at another institution. And then in five years, they graduate with two degrees. Uh, there are a few partnerships where those additional two years will end up being a master's degree. So you get your bachelor's from Fort, from Fort Valley and your master's from another institution. But this is predominantly for our math and chemistry majors, but it's a wonderful program. So if any students are interested in STEM, I highly encourage them to check out our CDEP program. We do have an, uh, a scholarship for out-of-state students. It's called our Searchlight Scholarship. And this is a $13,000 renewable scholarship each year. And students receive faculty and staff mentorship, research experience, and the requirements are you have to be a non-Georgia resident, you must exhibit financial need, you must exhibit leadership experience, and you must have at least a 1000 SAT score or a 20 on the ACT, and then a 3.0 or higher GPA. But again, this is the Searchlight Scholarship, and you can find this on our financial aid website. It's a wonderful scholarship for out-of-state students. Talking about money, we are number eight in the nation for colleges with tuition under $20,000. So our in-state students pay about $10,000 per academic year. And then our out-of-state students pay about $16,000. So if you are a student who's able to get the Searchlight Scholarship, that's a $13,000 scholarship, and your out-of-state tuition is only $16,000, you only end up with less than $5,000 uh, student loans or out-of-pocket expenses. So that's an amazing opportunity for those who are financially conscious of their education. Um, this is a wonderful chance to come to a school that's very affordable and still gives you great access and opportunities. Um, we have some alumni who are featured on the National Geographic show. Our agriculture department is a very big part of our institution here at Fort Valley State University. And so our alum are in the, uh, they feature the show Critter Fixers, Country Vets, and National Geographic Wild has announced that they are renewing this show for its third season beginning in spring 2022. And they are also donating $50,000 to students majoring in veterinary technology here at Fort Valley. So the, the, the opportunities just keep building up more and more and more. This is a wonderful opportunity if there are any students interested in veterinary technology to come on down, get that Searchlight Scholarship, get the funds from National Geographic Wild, and make some amazing moves in your career. We are Division II in athletics. So we have football, men and women's basketball, men and women's cross country, men and women's track, men's tennis, softball, men and women's volleyball, and a co-ed cheerleading team. When it comes to living on campus, our students have it way better than I did back when I was in college. Um, I lived in a traditional style residence hall when I had to have shower shoes and a shower caddy, and we shared the restroom, every girl on the hall. Well, here at Fort Valley State University, our students are living in suite style uh, rooms. So that means that there is four, if there are four students in a suite, then two people are sharing a bathroom. And then on the other side of the suite, two people share a restroom. But you do get the privacy that you're looking for uh, by being able to close your door. Just to wrap it up, uh, I'll post our admissions information in the chat and my contact information as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Lauren, for presenting on Fort Valley State. Just a reminder before we head off to our next school, I want to remind all of our attendees that the Q&A button is available for you to ask any questions that you have for our presenters. It can be to the schools that have already presented, the school that's coming up, um, and at any time. So we hope that you will ask a question or two to personalize the experience. And also, uh, like Lauren said, um, she's going to post her information in the chat and the Alabama State information is there. So we hope you'll copy and paste that out of the chat um, and get yourself connected to even more info than today. All right, well, we are moving on to our next school, and we are going to be hearing all about North Carolina Central University. Brandon? Hello, good evening, everyone.
At the core of us all burns a passion for greatness. It's the rhythm of our hearts, the desire to ascend to greater heights, the drive to persevere and push beyond expectations. At North Carolina Central <laughs> University, we fan that flame in an innovative and inclusive community driven by a relentless pursuit of excellence. It's here at NCCU, in the heart of Research Triangle, that you will soar with the eagles and discover what's central to you. So good evening, everyone. My name is Brandon Bird. I'm the admissions counselor here at North Carolina Central University. Uh, just to get us started, uh, NCC was founded on July 5th, 1910 by this man here, Dr. James E. Shepard. Uh, he was a pharmacist as well as a religious educator whose intent when he founded the institution was to provide young women and men with character and sound academic training for real service to a nation. Um, now, at North Carolina Central University is located in Durham, or which is in the late 1800s and the early 1900s was also known as the central hub for African-American businesses and financial services, often referred to as Black Wall Street. Our campus is nestled on 144 acres, and we call it the Sloping Hills and Verdant Greens here at NCCU. Our motto is truth and service. And just to make sure that we're staying in line with the motto here of Dr. James Shepard, I mean, it's required for all students upon graduation to complete 120 uh, service hours of community service before graduating. Um, our mascot is Eddie the Eagle and our school colors are maroon and gray. So here at NCCU, we have just under 8,000 students with the female to male ratio about 29% female, uh, 70, excuse me, 29% male rather, 71% female. Our average class size here is 23 per classroom and the student to faculty ratio is 16 to one. Uh, so what that will mean for you coming in as a freshman, you will receive a hands-on personalized learning experience. And I often like to tell students that they will develop a relationship similar to that of which they have with their honor uncle or godmother or godfather in terms of the faculty and staff here because they're truly devoted in seeing you succeed and they care about uh, you know, helping you promote and get into that next level. Uh, now we do have 81 degree programs with 146 degree concentrations. And now you wanna consider your degree concentration to be the focal point of your degree. So if you're interested in going on to law school, I would consider majoring in political science with the focus in pre-law. And a uh, fun fact here, in one academic year, students were able to complete 3,436 hours of that volunteer service I was referring to earlier. So these are our popular programs here at NCCU, uh, business administration, nursing, criminal justice, psychology, and biology and biomedical sciences. Uh, we're one of the only institutions within the state of North Carolina to actually offer the, the major of biology and biomedical sciences. They do come in concentrations such as forensics, chemistry, pre-med, and pre-dentistry. Um, with criminal justice and psychology, they do offer an ABM program where you're able to get your bachelor's as well as your master's in a matter of three years. I know psychology comes with concentrations in general and clinical psychology. Uh, criminal justice provides concentrations in homeland security, juvenile justice, and corrections. And we have a highly accredited online criminal justice program here as well. Um, our nursing program offers four ways for students to obtain their BSN. Uh, we have a traditional path which takes about four years, accelerated path which takes about three years, and we have a path for uh, registered nurses and veterans. And we also have our clinical resource skill lab training center in our Eagle General Hospital, which is pictured here above. And lastly, business administration offers concentration and, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, and financial analytics, cybersecurity, accounting, human resource management, entrepreneurship, the whole nine yards. And also our business school is highly accredited by the Association to Advance Collegiate Schools of Business. And only 5% of business schools around the country have actually earned that distinction. And so as I mentioned, we have over 100 and clubs and organizations here to give, help you get involved here at NCCU. A few of my favorites, if you are a leader at the high school level and looking to continue that at the collegiate level, uh, the student engagement and leadership uh, promotes leadership development and co-curricular engagement and extracurricular activities. Um, our student government association kind of serves as a voice of self-interest amongst the student body here on campus. Um, and our student activities boards actually plays a helping hand with conducting some of our homecoming and cultural celebrations. Um, we are also home to the Divine Nine Fraternities and Sororities on the National Panel of Council. Uh, we also invite special guests through our Light Rock the Mic license series. Uh, previous keynote speakers have included fashion icon Dapper Dan, um, actress, um, excuse me, Felicia Rashad, but we had Kiki Palmer, the actress, uh, ex-NFL player Michael Vick, um, and T.I. Harris, the rapper as well. Uh, we also have additional resources here at NCCU, such as a writing center, speaking studios, we offer tutoring services, a student accessibility service to accommodate our students with special needs, uh, the whole nine yards, so much more here to offer at NCCU. Now, when it comes to sports, we are uh, division one. We have about uh, 310 student athletes who compete in 13 division one sports. 
Um, some of the sports here for men and women are basketball, cross country, track and field, and tennis. A few of our athletic highlights, our basketball team recently had a documentary produced by ESPN anchor Stephen A. Smith, as well as NBA player Chris Paul entitled Why Not Us. Uh, we also had two of our alumni go on to win the, the Super Bowl with the Tampa Bay Bucks last year. And our basketball team was actually three-time defending MEAC champs uh, prior to the COVID-2020 season. Now here at NCC, we do like to establish a close working relationship with the student athletes and the faculty and staff on campus. So we do allow our student athletes to check out It works to NCCU get their physics degree and spend two years at one of our two part three partner schools, which is Duke University, Georgia Tech, and North Carolina State University. Uh, we also have a broad program hosted by the Office of International Affairs, um, and we are actually home to our Bright and DBRI research facilities, which house our cancer, pharmaceutical, and neuroscience research as well. Um, now, that's key to where we're at because we're in Durham, North Carolina, right outside the Research Triangle Park. And there's roughly about 200 research facilities that do come to campus for recruiting engagements, for postgraduate opportunities, as well as summer internships. And we also do have an ROTC scholarship for the U.S. Air Force and Army. And we have a unique collaboration with Duke University that does allow students to complete the physical training of that portion on Duke's campus. And did we have reached the end of your time? I want to make sure we get your contact information out there for sure. Okay, not a problem. I'll go get... ahead and put that in the chat for you if you have any questions. Uh, feel free to contact me. Give me one second here. Awesome. Thank you so much for presenting on North Carolina Central. My name is Kendra Turner, and I'm a proud graduate of Howard University. Howard University by far was one of the best decisions of my life. Not only at Howard was I able to forge lifelong relationships and friendships that today are some of my biggest and greatest support systems, I also was able to understand what it means to lead and how to truly be a great leader and a strategic thinker. One of the best parts about Howard is that it teaches you how to hustle. It's nothing like the Howard hustle. It teaches you how to create a vision for your life, set your goals, and go after those goals. And don't stop until you get those goals. A, re a relentless pursuit of greatness. Um, and I definitely appreciate that for Howard because it continues to carry over to so many aspects of my life that a relentless pursuit for greatness, for excellence, for achieving the goal. One of the second best things about Howard was also the exposure to the diversity that exists within um, within people of African descent. I was, you know, in classrooms and next to people who were Afro-Latino, Afro-American from the continent of Africa, um, all over the world, really. And that exposure um, of the variety of cultures that exist just within the African diaspora, as well as um, those cultures that are domestic. So people from New York, people from Texas, people from Michigan, people from Florida. It really opened my eyes to help me understand that life is so much bigger than the South Side of Chicago. And that's important. Um, as I continue to um, work in my own career, um, being able to relate and connect to people across a variety of cultures, um, across a variety of com maybe communication barriers that may exist, understanding those differences and being able to relate to them has been important. And I definitely learned that at Howard or one of the many things I learned at Howard. And being able to walk in the footsteps of some of the greatest people in history also helped me um, and encouraged me and motivated me to find my own place in history and how to create my own black history. So go Bison, H-U, you know. All right, so while all that other stuff's happening, we are going to have a little bit of live Q&A together. So I'd love to invite each of our representatives to come back on camera uh, together. We're gonna do this kind of round robin style. So as we, um, I'll present a question, we'll go in the exact same order that you presented. So we'll start with Desiree from Alabama State. Thank you for being the number one each time. I really appreciate it. Um, and then for Lauren and Brandon, as um, the presenter ahead of you finishes, just feel free to turn on your microphone and answer away. I won't call on you in between um, during this kind of portion. And all right, so let me get our first question up here. So for all of you, um, admissions counselors are the pros. You know the college search process inside and out and can share such valuable information with all of our students, parents, anyone watching. Um, so what advice, what is your top tip that you would give someone going through the college search process now? Desiree? Um, definitely have all your ducks in a row. 
Uh, and I mean, in the sense that um, have your transcripts, um, have your ACT scores, um, you know, um, you know, make sure that your counselor has them, you have them. Uh, and, and because a lot of times I know the students are scrambling for those things and that's kind of holds up sometimes your acceptance letter, simple things like that, that are easy enough to get. Uh, also remember that a lot of times College Board, you can get your, your scores for free on College Board. I think sometimes that's forgotten. Um, so that's my tip, particularly during the application process. Um, understand your deadlines ahead of time. Um, definitely when it comes to scholarships, um, first come, first serve. So it's best to um, apply early and often. And um, so those are my tips right there. I would say my best piece of advice would be take college visits. I think um, not enough people pay attention that they can go on the campus, they can meet people, they can see the facilities, they can actually ask the questions that need to be asked. And most importantly, you get a chance to see is that the environment that you're looking for. College is more than just that academic piece. You're growing into a person and you're learning your leadership skills. You're learning more about yourself. It's a full overall development. And just because an institution has the major that you're interested in may not be the best environment for you. So you have to understand what type of learner you are and what you're looking for. Some institutions are in a large city. Some institutions are in a college town. It's really up to you to determine what's the full experience you want, because if you're only taking 15 credit hours in a semester, one day you may have two classes, the, the next day you may have three classes. What are you doing with the rest of the time in your day? So it's very important to take campus visits uh, as much as you can, even if it's just, you know, your top three or your top five schools, just to make sure you understand the culture of that institution and everything it has to offer outside of just the academic major. And I can add to that, um, to Ms. Dixon and Ms. Bass as well. Definitely want to make sure you have all your documentation. Uh, you may want to make sure that you take visits, um, do your research. That's very critical. Um, if, you, if you have the opportunity, schedule appointments with counselors like ourselves one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. And uh, if you're able to speak with any student ambassadors or student leaders who are on campus as well to get their perspective of student life there at the institution that you're seeking to gain entrance to. I love all these tips and I love when I see other heads nod and people can follow up because I hope it shows everyone watching that this is real information that's really helpful. I can never, as a former college admission counselor, I can never help myself from jumping in with some tips too, but um, I would definitely say, I hope one thing you take away from today is that these college admissions counselors are people, they aren't just often in an office reading applications and it's all scary, but they want you to ask questions. There's no question that's too small. Um, that's what they live for. They want to know what is it that you want to know about the school? What are you excited about? What are your goals? What are you worried about when you're thinking about college? So they can showcase and make the experience of coming to campus or, you know, answering questions on a phone call or email really personal. So just ask questions because this is what they're here for. And it's the only way you're going to learn and really figure out what's going to be the great fit for you um, today. So definitely check that out. All right. So next question, we're going to pivot this time and it's, we're going back to a little something about each of your schools um, because there is so much more to share. So you know, after today, when students are thinking about following up and they want to, you know, remember the schools they just learned about in this presentation, what is one thing you really want them to walk away with or a couple words that you really think um, kind of define who you are that they can, you know, remember as uh, when tonight concludes? Desiree, thank you for starting us off again. I really appreciate that. Um, I want them to remember that Alabama State is a very much a family oriented uh, university. Um, I have, you know, I, my family went to Alabama State. I didn't go to Alabama State. I went to um, uh, a, a Big Ten University in Illinois. And so I kind of know the difference, um, obviously, from going there and then working Alabama State and obviously having family that graduated from Alabama State. And what I want them to know is that um, it's, it's small in the sense that they're, 
faculty really know their students. They really engage with them. Uh, they walk them down the camp, off the quad and they're calling people's names from their class. I mean, I didn't necessarily have that at such a big 10 university. And I also want them to understand that even though it's got that very family oriented, small, intimate kind of uh, experience, it is just big enough where you feel like you're having that college experience, that you've gone away and you're fulfilling a, a need of experiencing things. I mean, we have students from all over the world. We have uh, students from all over the nation. We have students from every kind of ethnicity and background, uh, even though we're a historical black college. Um, but I want them to understand that it's very family oriented, um, that people are very respectful and, and, and friendly. And uh, you don't always get that sometimes with the big, big universities. Um, our campus normally is 6,000 students uh, at COVID. It's about probably about 3,500, um, but it still has a very intimate family oriented uh, feeling. And uh, I just want them to take that away and remember that about Alabama State. I will say I did not get a chance to discuss the admissions requirements, but we are not uh, test optional. We do require the SAT or the ACT, but the important part about us requiring that, all of our scholarships require SAT or ACT scores. So that's very important that if you're going to apply to Fort Valley, you take one of those exams because once you get those scores, you're now eligible for our scholarship opportunities. Okay, um, if I could describe North Carolina Central in three words, it would be family, service, and opportunity. Um, and to add, I didn't get to share the admissions requirements as well, but for the fall 22 semester, we will be test optional, along with all of our scholarships as well, will be test optional in that regard. All great information. Um, all right, next question, we're cycling back to the college search process. So. Just as you all are tips and advice, there's a lot of myths out there, misinformation and worries that people have. So I'd love to hear from each of you a myth. What's one myth you'd like to debunk in the college admissions process? And what's the what's the real deal that you would like to share with your with the students? Um, I guess uh, the, the myth that's kind of come up recently is that because we've become test optional at our university and that um, if you, you can enter in with a 2.0 GPA that uh, it, it's, it's, I suppose in a way it's easier to get in general admission, but it, it's not that you're, you're, you're not gonna have to come and, and show um, your level of aptitude. We do have AccuPlacer testing uh, for those who choose to waive their tests, their ACT or SAT. So I want them to understand that you are going to, in some way, be tested at, at you know, but you'll be tested at orientation with the AccuPlacer test. And so um, come in mind knowing that, you, you know, it, 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 this is a school, a college, it, it, it's about fun, it's about um, doing uh, wonderful things, but we, at the admissions uh, time, you are going to need to show that you have the aptitude to be at college. I will say when you think about admissions deadlines, right now Fort Valley doesn't have a deadline. We have rolling admission, but that doesn't mean that you should wait to apply until you graduate high school in May. Um, it's still first come first serve with financial aid. It's still first come first serve with scholarships. And most importantly, it's first come first serve when you register for classes. So don't let it be fooled that not having a specific deadline means apply as late as you want. Because if you wait, the longer you wait, the current students are able to fill up a lot of those classrooms. And even though freshmen have certain curriculum, you never know how many students are applying at one time. So as soon as you can, start gathering your application information, su submit your materials, because if you wait, you're not guaranteed to get the class load that you need. You're not guaranteed to be roommates or suite mates with whoever you're interested in living with. Um, a, a rolling admission doesn't mean take your poor precious time. And I can um, add to that as well, on what you said about the rolling admissions piece. Um, take advantage of all this stuff early. Um, another myth about 
the whole college process is that colleges offer uh, fee waivers. Uh, North Carolina Central, we do not offer fee waivers, but we do accept fee waivers to College Board, SAT, and ACT as well. Um, so if you're able to, although we're not requiring a test score, um, that would waive the fee. Those are all, I think, great reminders of like, what does rolling admissions really mean? And remembering too, that every school is going to be a little bit different, especially in our landscape with test optional or not, different deadlines, you know, fee waivers, different parts of the process. Some need letters of recommendation, some need, um, you know, references and, and essays and others don't. And it's all just different. So I think it's being on top of that material, like starting early, paying attention to those details and utilizing your resources. You know, your guidance counselors and teachers are there to be your help, but also these admissions counselors. All right, so on to our very last question. This is a really fun one to end on. Um, and I think it's a great way to just showcase a little bit more about each school. So what is a fun fact, something really unique about your institution? Maybe it's something that you just love, but it doesn't always make the admissions presentation when you're focused on deadlines and facts and figures. Um, um, well, let's see. Um, well, I think a fun fact that, that I didn't know, uh, even though I, I've i had family going to Alabama State forever and, and my daughter's going in the future, but um, that there was a graduate. He's kind of, uh, he's famous. Um, and I'm not going to lie. I, I don't know a lot about his music, but his name is Two Chains. And um, he was a grad, he's a graduate from Alabama State University. And he's actually come back and done free concerts and a lot. But Two Chains graduated from one of our top tier popular degree programs, which is business. And he had a 4.0 GPA. Now, that's why I say don't ever judge a book by its cover. Don't ever look at how what bit what what uh path someone takes. Um, because look at two chains, you wouldn't think he was a business major that had a, a, a 4.0 GPA, but he's a very smart guy. He's, uh, I mean, since he's come back and done some free concerts, I've actually had a chance to meet him. But uh, he is very friendly, very uh, outgoing, and very smart. And so I tell all future Hornets, all students that, you know, do what you love, do what you're passionate about. Um, but also do what you think is fun too and a unique. And he is all of that. So that I guess that's a unique fun fact about our school. I will say something that's unique right now. If you have seen the movie Just Mercy, Just Mercy or Hunger Games, um, the one that came out in 2012 or Hidden Figures, we have a, a visiting professor, Ms. Karen Kendrick. She is in our um, media studies department. So she's helping with the drama, dance, screenwriting, script writing development. Um, she started this semester. So she is a visiting professor here at Fort Valley. Okay, a uh, fun fact about NCCU. Uh, we recently uh, have gained our hip hop history class uh, here at NCCU. And it's actually being taught by uh, Christopher uh, Play Martin from Kid and Play from House Party, um, as well as Ninth Wonder. He's a Grammy Award winning producer who's worked with artists like Drake, J. Cole, Rick Ross, uh, Rhapsody, um, artists of that caliber there. So they instruct the hip hop education course here at NCCU. Awesome. I love that. I hope every student's now thinking, oh, I got to go Google. I got to go check this out. I need to look up more about these awesome professors and grads and um, just a little insight into who you might get to learn from and uh, who's followed in the, you know, whose footsteps you might follow in on campus as well. All right, well, we have reached the end of our time together today. I wanna to thank, first of all, our presenters. Um, thank you for sharing not just those facts and figures about the admissions process, but your energy, your excitement, the passion you have for your students' experiences in and out of the classroom is absolutely evident. And it's hard to do in six minutes, I know. For everyone who's watching, whether you watch live or you're watching the recording, I hope that you are inspired and excited. Maybe one school drew you here, but I hope you're walking away and saying, I now have three schools that I need to be learning more about. I need to follow up because you might just be finding um, a new top choice and new place that you're excited about pursuing your education and taking those next steps into your future as well. 
All right, now the logistics part. This one isn't as fun as all the, all the fun facts and all of that, but all right, so when you close your window, students and attendees, there's going to be a very quick five question survey. I promise it is so short and easy, students. We would love any feedback that you can provide. We hope that you enjoyed all of the other earlier sessions that were part of the programming for the Noble students. Don't forget that all of these sessions have been recorded. They're going to be posted in the upcoming days at the same website where you registered. You can see that on the screen, strivescan.com forward slash noble. And don't forget, after today, Follow up, contact these admissions representatives, learn more, ask questions, um, follow those deadlines. And even though the college search process can get overwhelming at times, it is really fun. Enjoy it. It's an exciting adventure that you have ahead. Thanks again, everyone, for being here with us. Thank you for taking the time out of your day. Good night, everyone.